in the heart of the bustling city, where skyscrapers reached for the clouds and the streets hummed with the rhythm of ambition, lived a man named Oliver Strickland. Oliver was a man of precision, a businessman whose life was meticulously organized, a symphony of meetings and deals orchestrated to perfection. His days began at dawn, with the sun barely peeking over the horizon. Oliver would stride into his sleek, modern penthouse, adorned with the trappings of success, contemporary art, minimalist furniture, and floor-to-ceiling windows that framed a panoramic view of the city below. His wardrobe was a reflection of his personality, crisp suits, polished shoes, and a collection of silk ties meticulously color-coordinated. As the CEO of Strickland Enterprises, a conglomerate with interests spanning from technology to real estate, Oliver had built an empire from the ground up. He was known for his sharp mind, unwavering determination, and the ability to turn any situation to his advantage. His colleagues respected him, his rivals feared him, and the media followed his every move. Oliver's daily routine was a well choreographed dance. He would start the morning with a rigorous workout, pushing his body to match the sharpness of his mind. A quick shower, a glance at the financial news, and he would be ready to conquer the day. The city was his kingdom, and he navigated its streets with the confidence of a man who had earned his place at the top. His first destination was always Strickland Tower, the towering skyscraper that housed the headquarters of his empire. The elevator ride to the top floor was a moment of reflection for Oliver. As the doors opened, revealing a sweeping view of the city, he felt a surge of pride. This was his domain, and he ruled it with an iron fist wrapped in a velvet glove. The day unfolded in a series of meetings, each one a strategic move in the grand chess game of business. Oliver's mind was a calculating machine, analyzing data predicting market trends, and making decisions that would shape the future of his company. He was surrounded by a team of capable executives, but it was his vision that set the course. In the midst of his corporate conquests, Oliver found solace in the quiet moments. The rare breaks between meetings were spent on his private balcony, sipping black coffee and gazing at the city below. He marveled at the pulsating energy the ebb and flow of life that mirrored the stock tickers in his office. However, Oliver's meticulously constructed world was not without its cracks. The sacrifices he made for success had left him with a personal life that resembled a neglected garden. Relationships, friendships, and even family ties had withered away in the shadow of his ambitions. The penthouse that symbolized his triumphs was also a lonely sanctuary. One evening, as the sun painted the sky in hues of pink and orange, Oliver found himself standing at the balcony, lost in thought. The city below was a canvas, and he was the painter who had sacrificed everything for his masterpiece. But as the colors of the sky deepened, a nagging emptiness crept into his chest in that moment of vulnerability. Oliver's phone buzzed with a message. It was an invitation to a charity event, a cause he had once been passionate about but had recently taken a backseat in the whirlwind of his corporate pursuits. The message stirred something within him, a flicker of the man he used to be, the one who believed in making a difference beyond the boardroom. As he stood there, torn between the world he had built and the one he had left behind, Oliver made a decision. The following evening, he traded his tailored suit for a tuxedo and descended from his ivory tower to attend the charity event. The atmosphere was different from the sterile corporate environments he was accustomed to, warmth, compassion, and a genuine desire to create positive change. As Oliver mingled with people who were dedicated to making a difference, he felt a spark of something he had long forgotten, connection. Conversations flowed effortlessly. Laughter echoed through the room. And for the first time in years, Oliver Strickland felt a sense of belonging outside the cold confines of his corporate kingdom. 
In the weeks that followed, Oliver began to recalibrate his life. He realized that success, while fulfilling in many ways, was not the sole measure of a meaningful existence. He started to allocate time to rebuild relationships, reconnect with old friends, and invest in the neglected aspects of his personal life. The change in Oliver was evident not only in his personal life but also in the way he led his company. The once purely profit-driven machine started to incorporate a sense of social responsibility. Strickland Enterprises began to champion causes, invest in sustainable practices, and contribute to the community that had fueled its growth. Oliver's transformation was not without challenges. There were skeptics within his own ranks who questioned the shift in focus. But he navigated these waters with the same resilience that had propelled him to the top. Slowly but surely, he earned the respect not only as a shrewd businessman but also as a leader with a heart. The city that once served as a backdrop for Oliver's conquests now witnessed a different kind of success, one measured not just in financial figures but in the positive impact on the lives of those touched by his decisions. As he looked out from his penthouse balcony, the view was the same. But Oliver Strickland saw it with new eyes, eyes that recognized the value of balance, purpose, and the intricate dance of life beyond the boardroom. Music